stress. Now at its most basic, we've got mental stress. This will be something like a fight with a loved one, argument with a boss, the kids won't be quiet in the back of the car, or, oh shit, someone's chasing me down a dark alley with a knife. Then we've got physical stress. Things like parasites in the body, bacterial infections, we've got blood sugar imbalances, a misalignment in the body perhaps. And then when we're talking about stress, we also need to talk about the adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands, they're basically two small glands that sit above the kidney. Now, they've got a direct relationship with stress because they produce the hormones that our body needs to deal successfully with stress. Basically, adrenaline and cortisol. Long-term stress. Now, the problem with modern-day lives is that we've created this kind of low-level, chronic, long-term stress environment, which is very different to how ancient man evolved and experienced the world. For them, it was a kind of fight-or-flight situation. We're sitting by a campsite, and all of a sudden, a pack of lions is chasing us. We get out of danger, and our body returns then to homeostasis. Now, in modern lives, where we find ourselves in extended periods of stress, extended periods of elevated cortisol, we reach a point where our adrenal glands just simply tire out. But before the adrenal glands do tire out, they're in the position of always creating cortisol. Now, when everything's working normally, cortisol levels should be at their highest in the morning, and then they should gradually decrease as we go throughout our day, their lowest point being in the evening when we're ready to sleep. But with chronic stress, what we find in people is that their cortisol levels are actually the lowest in the morning. So it's hard to get out of bed. We've got foggy thinking. We can't really do anything until we have six cups of coffee and four Red Bulls. And then later on in the day, it goes from a low position up to a high position where actually we're so wired, but we're tired and we just can't seem to fall asleep. And then this lack of sleep, along with other things, starts to have negative health effects. Hormonal imbalances are also another thing that we tend to suffer from in long-term stress because your body is so busy producing what it needs to cope with the stress, basically the cortisol hormone, that it neglects the production of other essential hormones, stuff like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and the whole range of other hormones that we need get sacrificed because the body is very efficient at coping with stress. Digestive problems can also be the result of long-term stress because, again, your body prioritizes, so it moves blood away from the digestive system into the muscles and anything else you might need to get away from those lions. And we can also suffer from weight gain because, basically, all the glucose, extra glucose that are being produced to cope with this, this stress, this perceived sense of stress, is not being used because you're not really running from lions. You're sitting in front of your computer replying to your emails and you're probably not going to the gym because you left your gym bag at home. So what does our body do? It stores these glucose as fat. So what can we do to try and improve stress? The first thing is reduce our drug use, stuff like caffeine, sugar, alcohol, because it just causes stress on the body. Look at ways to try improving our sleep winding down at night, getting off technology before you go to sleep, all those sorts of things, and exercise. Supplements or things we could take include calcium and magnesium, which are kind of anti-stress nutrients. They sort of have a calming, almost tranquilizing effect on the nervous system. Plus, when we're stressed, our body draws magnesium from the body and uses magnesium. Vitamin C is another good thing to take because basically vitamin C is essential in the production of cortisol and if you're producing a lot of cortisol, you're likely to become deficient in vitamin C. Another thing is diet. Eliminate foods that you know you're sensitive to because this causes internal stress. Try and eat well and try and balance your blood sugar. So combining foods in the most optimal way for your body.